Hey everybody, welcome to another exciting vlog. <laughs> this one's gonna be a little lighter maybe. I don't know, I say that, who knows. It's 6.09 p.m. on Wednesday, June 29th, 2022, and I got a haircut, finally. Um, now you may notice this hair is a little longer. We'll talk about that, we'll get to that. Um, anyways, because there's there's a lot of little fun things to talk about in this trash day, and I gotta do some laundry. And, uh, so anyways, anybody that's new here, you don't know, I always do time code chapter stops so you can jump around to the things you do want to see, skip the things you don't, go back and forth, watch it over multiple installments, however you want to use those. So look for those blue numbers in the description below. I'll give you a little description of what you're jumping to. So, because I know not everything I do is for everybody, and I like to give you that option. That said, uh, we're going to make kind of a light dinner tonight, but something interesting, so we'll get to that. Uh, there's definitely a couple of movie reviews, like we saw uh, Elvis, and uh, Be I saw Beavis and Butthead do uh, The Universe. We'll be talking about that. I got some game talk I was playing video games today. Uh, <laughs> what else? Uh, Got to do some jamboree updates, maybe some wedding updates, and uh, make some kind of cocktail. I haven't decided what yet, but we'll figure something out, and we'll talk about all of that and more. And I'll tell you, I've had a great day and a frustrating day yesterday and, and all kinds of stuff. So we'll get to all that, but first, I'm getting a late start on dinner. It's a real easy one, but let's get to it. Let's cook something. Tucci gang, Tucci gang, Tucci gang. Today, we're going to make something from the Stanley Tucci cookbook. Because uh, apparently he's a big foodie, and I love me some Stanley Tooch, so uh, we're going to do something light. We've been doing a lot of pizzas. You'll see that on all the Ninja Turtle videos we're making, because I'm making pizzas for all those. I'm doing a lot of burgers lately. You know, July 4th is around the corner, Jamboree's around the corner, Wedding's around the corner after that. It's like, okay, let's have something a little lighter, a little healthier, but still, we're going to play. We're going to try something I've never really worked with. So, from the Stanley Tucci cookbook, which there's just so many recipes in here, um, we'll be playing with this over time for sure. We are going today to make on page 42, the roasted mushroom salad with lettuce, balsamic vinaigrette, and Parmesan shavings. The insalata de fungi aristiti? Please correct me if I'm wrong. So this is gonna take three quarter pound of any single variety of mushrooms or a combination. Shiitake, oyster, crimini, portobello, porcini, chanterelle, cinnamon cap, Cut into wedges. Guess what? We're in luck. I'll explain that in a second. Five tea, uh, tablespoons plus two tea, teaspoons of extra virgin olive oil, one shallot thinly sliced, one tablespoon chopped fresh Italian flat leaf parsley, kosher salt, fresh ground black pepper, two tablespoons of balsamic vinegar, three quarter pounds of bib or Boston lettuce, and 16 large shavings of Parmesan cheese, about two ounces. So basically all we're going to do here is we're going to slice up a little shallot, I already have the mushrooms. They're already pretty much sliced how we want them. And I got three boxes because these are four ounces each. So that makes uh, 12 ounces, which is three quarters of a pound. Um, I got some parsley. We'll do our teaspoon of that and kind of clean that off. I got my extra virgin olive oil. Uh, we got this for our balsamic. That's what we tend to use. I got my salt. You've seen it. I got, you know, the pepper grinder. Now, I don't know if I got enough lettuce because Bib in Boston was a little bit trickier to find, although I did find something better today, but I didn't get it. Um, so we got some living lettuce we'll work with some, for some bib, and if that's not enough, uh, you can kind of substitute with like a romaine. It's not going to be quite as good. I have since found more bib and some Boston lettuce, but by that point, it's like, well, I need to use this stuff, don't buy stuff and waste it. So I've already got the oven uh, going to 450 degrees. That's how we're preheating. And what we want to do is want to get these uh, mushrooms and shallot ready, because we're going to toss them in a baking dish with three tablespoons of the olive oil, the shallot, the parsley, salt and pepper. We're gonna roast those in the oven until they're brown but still firm and the shallots have wilted six to eight minutes. And we're gonna set that aside. Then in a large bowl, we're gonna whisk the remaining two tablespoons plus tea, two, two teaspoons of olive oil, salt and pepper to taste, add the vinegar and uh, add the lettuce, toss thoroughly. Then we're gonna distribute those lettuces on four salad plates, maybe two, I don't know. And we're gonna to top with the mushrooms and Parmesan cheese, serve immediately. Uh, it goes with white wine, so that's nice. And, um, I don't know why I just closed that on myself. And, uh, <laughs> crap, I got the jacket all screwed up here. Uh, and we'll probably do some taste tests of some other stuff here later, because I got some things I want to taste test. All right, so I'm gonna just set this, open this and set it to the side for my own remembrance. Let's go ahead and put this camera down. Sorry, we haven't really cleaned up the kitchen yet today, so a bit of a mess. Here's my baking dish for all the stuff to go into. Put this back here for now. I really should have cleaned this all up. Oh, he recommends using <clears throat> a vegetable peeler for shaving the parm. We'll get to that. Okay, I'm just gonna go ahead and grab a paper towel. And 
Set my teaspoon tablespoon to the side, put my ring in the pocket so I don't get it all dirty and messy. Grab my cleaning towel on standby. And get my, uh-oh. Why is the kitchen knife not there? Oh, that's right, Mary used it, and luckily it's washed. I just haven't actually done the dishes, or emptied the dishes yet today. I panicked for a minute. Okay, so I haven't worked with a shallot in a minute. I was thinking about doing this to make it real thin. This is like a garlicky onion. These are really delicious. I'm not really sure how I wanna handle this though. I think we're just gonna take off the root. And then I guess we'll just kind of chop it down to half and treat it like a regular onion. I probably should have left that root on. We obviously want to peel a little bit. Like I said, I don't, I haven't worked with shallots enough to really know what I'm doing here, but I'm gonna take off like a super thin layer of it. Okay, I think I know what I'm doing now. Do 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 do. I did buy two shallots just in case, but. We don't need too much in here. This is supposed to be pretty light and delicious. You got a little something there. Okay, so I'm just gonna try to slice this like super thin. Actually, I'm gonna take this tip off because I, I had a different plan than what I'm doing here, but. I'm doing the thing, I got my face right up in it too. Mmm, smells really good. And again, anybody checking, I am not a professional chef. I do not have professional knife skills per se, like speed anyways. I am just doing all this for fun because I like to learn things. This is all going in here. Try to break it up a little bit as we put it in there. Clean off the knife bits. Yeah, actually, that's pretty good. I did I did a fairly thin cut on all of these. Okay. And I'm just glad the mushrooms are already cut. And this I'm just kind of breaking up into smaller pieces by hand, because you know, again, you don't want anybody to have a huge chunk of it, necessarily. A lot of people would not like that. I like that, I love onion. Cooked raw, sauteed, caramelized, whatever. Red, white, yellow, shallot, <laughs> Gene, Siskel, Ebert. All right. Yeah, this is like probably the most work we have to do right here. So everything else is gonna go pretty quick. That tip is probably usable even, but who knows. I'm in a hurry and I didn't do my research. Uh oh, Mary's making sounds of frustration. She was cleaning out the litter for the trash tonight. Sounds like something went wrong or the cats got into something, like they do. Okay, and then just keep breaking these up. Because we're, obviously we're gonna toss this around once we kind of get everything in here, so. Give me a chance to separate a little more here and there. Hi. Got her, her, her earbuds in. Okay. I wanna lay you down on a bed of shallots. Okay. All right, so we got that. I don't think I really need to prep much else here. Um, so let me take a look at the book. Toss, mushrooms, foil, shallot, parsley. Oh, right, I still gotta work some parsley. We don't need a lot of parsley, so let's, we're just gonna rough chop some here. I'm not even gonna clean the whole bundle, I'm just gonna pick some off of it. Probably more than I need. What do we think? We think that's about a, eh, maybe a touch more. Okay, get rid of the 
the stems there. Just a little bit more. Just want to be sure. I'm going to give this a little rinse here. Too much power. Too powerful! A little gentle, delicate. There we go. Right. Mm, smells good. Got that fragrant, kind of lemony thing going on. And I'm just going to give this a light little rough chop. Once my hands are dry enough to do it. <laughs> Hand off the cutting board if I'm not cutting, I'm not holding nothing. Like I think that's just about good already. A little push through to really slice the ones on the board. Mm, yeah, that's really releasing that fragrant lemony scent. Just trying to make sure I mix, you know, slice through anything I see that looks like maybe too big a chunk here. And I'm gonna say that that is good. Oops, got a whole leaf that's stuck to the side. All right. <laughs> if you're hearing a little buzzing, it's this uh, snake toy. You may have seen it. it. It really likes to get stuck in places, but Jack loves it, so we try to keep it charged and ready for him. The other cats enjoy it too, but Jack really loves it. My little baby Jack Jake. Such a cute kitty. All right. All right, Parsley is in. Elvis Parsley is in the building. You knew a Elvis Presley Parsley joke was coming. All right, mushrooms, we'll get them in there. Olive oil, parsley, salt and pepper, which is pretty much to taste, so I'll just eyeball it. So again, this is a blend of uh, criminy, shiitake, and oyster. And these are all pre-washed, pre-cut, pre-ready to go. We be fast and they be slow. Uh, yeah, I don't think I need to cut them down. Ooh. I may have misjudged my uh, baking dish though. No, I think we're all right. I could have gone a size up, I think, but I think we're good. Might be just right. Yeah, get in there. Yeah, this is definitely gonna make a pretty sizable, unless those shrink a lot. I don't know. I know if I was sauteing them, they would definitely shrink a lot, but I don't know if uh, roasting them does that or not. Let me get this knife out of the way for right now. Too much stuff everywhere. Really should have cleaned the kitchen first. I'm dumb. All right, let's get this out of the way. So how much? I think, what, three tablespoons? Three tablespoons of the olive oil. And some salt and pepper, okay. I'll throw on some gloves and just work it. All right. One. Two. And three. Woohoo! that there, grind some pepper in. Mm, that's maybe about a quarter teaspoon I threw in there. Give it a healthy pinch of salt. That'll help sweat it down a little bit. All right, and some tossing gloves. 
I mean, you, you can get in there with your bare hands if you want. I just prefer putting on gloves. Ah! You gotta practice putting on gloves, apparently. Oh, come on now. What, are you making a joke about practicing putting on gloves? You wanna make a condom joke, Mary? Is that what you're, you're waiting to do? I see a look on your face. <laughs> Yeah, I really should have used this. I could have used the bigger, one of my bigger baking dishes, but just to have a little room for the tossing, quite honestly, because I'm trying to get that stuff out from underneath. Baking in that? Yeah, it's roasting in this dish. Okay. These are meant for the oven. I try to get some of these, you know, the parsley and the onions. I guess I should have put the mushrooms in here first. It would have been a little easier to work it all. Yeah. You don't have to agree with me. We all know I'm wrong. <laughs> Oh, uh, nothing. I was making a dumb joke for camera. Okay, put my ears back in. All right, she's putting her ears back in. I Get you a girl that can remove her ears. That way she'll never get sick of you talking too much. Oh, she heard that. Yeah, I can see my parsley's kind of clumped up in the center here, so. Come on now. But this is giving a pretty vigorous toss, too, because uh, I wonder if I should actually, if I stir this up halfway through. Because now I'm a little bit worried about the bottom. And it did say baking dish. It didn't say put it on a sheet pan or anything. I think that's probably pretty good. It looks pretty tossed. Maybe. All right. There we go. And our oven is already preheated. So we're gonna pop this bad boy in. And we'll mix up our, we'll, we'll toss our lettuce on the side. I guess we'll get a big mixing bowl. Oh good, the step stool's right there. I should have already had one out. Um, actually, Mary, can you uh, pop that open? Thank you. Thank you. Echo, set timer for eight minutes. Can you like center that? Eight minutes. You set it in the very edge. Well, let's so I can see it better. Okay. All right. Okay. All right. Now let's. Sexy cooking. Yeah, Mary. Excuse me, Aaron. I gotta borrow this, buddy. I gotta borrow. Aaron. Aaron, Mr. Purr. Mr. Purr, sir. Can I please borrow the step stool? Can you please get out from under it? Mr. Purr, your tail's still kind of hooking around it. Aaron. Aaron, can I please? Oh, now you want to sniff the feet? <laughs> there you go. Excuse me, buddy. Okay, sorry, I would have had this mixing bowl down already, but oh crap, I forgot I moved a crap ton of stuff in the way too. I really need to reorganize up in here. See what we can do. <laughs> Yo. YOLO. I don't know why I went to YOLO. Yeah, I'm gonna have to get down time too here. Oh. Just a tortilla press that I'll eventually use. Oh boy, that was that was almost bad. Definitely want to get a big mixing bowl out for this. Come on, separate, separate. All right, put it back. All right, slide that back in there, and tortilla press put back away. Back out of there. All right. Whew. And all right. Now we're back. Okay, so I, I, I probably don't need to be as specific as I'm about to be, but let's get specific. Let's bust out the food scale. It says three quarters of a pound. This way I make sure I use as much of the <coughs> bib as possible. All right, turn that on. Three, two, one. Bowl goes on, wait for it to weigh it, zero it out. All right, now let's see what we're working with here. This is one of those living plants too, so I don't know what the that all is, is all about. Apparently, I can, as long as it's keeping the water, it doesn't go bad, but I didn't know that, and I bought it a few days ago. Oh, there's plenty of good stuff in here, it looks like. So I'm gonna tear some leaves off and start throwing them in, get rid of any leaves that don't look great for now. And, uh, so we get to about three quarters of a pound. I've got to be careful with some of this because I don't want to get all that root in there. 
because it's one of the living ones. Got a half ounce so far. <laughs> Smells pretty good. I don't know that I've ever had bib lettuce, or at least not that I know of. Like, somebody may have given it to me and I didn't know. And... Yeah, definitely gonna have to... That's only like two ounces right there, so we're definitely gonna have to make some of this up with uh, romaine. Because a lot of it, honestly. Wow. Might get three ounces out of here. We need three quarters of a pound. We need 12 ounces. I'm getting about, maybe if I'm lucky, four ounces out of this. <laughs> four! Did we hit four? Mm -hmm. All right, crap. And that's about all I could be able to get out of there, I think. Because I don't want it all to be too much of the uh, crunchy in, inside parts. But yeah, I should have bought that thing at the grocery store today. Can I get scissors? All right, so we got four, uh, four and three eighths ounces out of that. There's 10 ounces in one of these bags, so I know we got enough to make up the difference here. Seven and a quarter. Yeah, a couple of these pieces are... Yeah. This is like till July 3rd, too. All right, eight and three eighths. You cut it, though. Cut it. Yeah, I know. Break it, bruise it. I know. Nine and three quarter. Ten and a half. Getting there. Oh, 11 and three eighths. A little bit more. And it doesn't have to be perfectly specific, but I wanted to at least be ballparking it. There we go. All right. More room to work, man. All right, take that off. Put this out, oh, whoops, almost pulled the thing out. Put the scale away, how are we doing on time? 240. Should probably take a peek in a second, but we'll see, we'll see. Scissors back away. All right, so, uh, large roll. Oh, you gotta be shitting me. We're supposed to whisk the other stuff together and then add the lettuce and toss. Uh, all right. I'm gonna mix all that up in a different bowl. Crap. Then we'll just pour it. <laughs> Whoopsie daisy. So here's we get two and two on the oil with the two on the vinegar, and then it's just salt and pepper. Okay. Two, two, and two. But since we have under two minutes, I'm gonna take a peek here. They're looking pretty nice, but I'm gonna give them the full eight minutes. Ooh, that smells good. That smelled really good. All right, so olive oil. Two. I'm not gonna go heaping here. Two tablespoons. And two teaspoons. Okay, that's good for the olive oil. And then we want some balsamic vinegar. Two tablespoons. We'll go a little heavier on this because we both like balsamic. Mary really loves it. Okay, and over there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's pepper this up. Ooh, can you actually see that? That's pretty cool looking. I'm gonna disturb it if I... <laughs> Just like the way it, you know, the oil and vinegar doesn't want to wants to stay separated. That's probably pretty good. Don't want to over salt this, so we'll go a little light on the salt. We'll give it a little mix up and maybe taste it. And here we 
my whisk. And get the sides down a little bit. Echo, dismiss. Another quick taste test. Tasty. See if we need to do any more with that. A little fork. I want to kind of, you know, work around here, make sure everything kind of. Some of those bottom ones got roasted. Yeah, I'd say that's pretty good. Mm, God, I could probably just eat that. Okay, so that's good. I think this actually needs a pinch more salt. brightness and acidity of the balsamic out. All right. Get as much out as I can, sorry for all the noise. tossing and then we're gonna be ready to put we'll shave some plate and we'll shave some parm on it I am excited for this we have so many so many gloves <clears throat> this will also help me kind of mix up the uh, lettuces what if I should have torn some of these big bib leaves Honestly, I wasn't sure that'd be enough dressing to coat everything, but it's doing a pretty good job here. Okay. Or a butter lettuce, it also says you could use, so, you know. All right. <laughs> No lettuce left behind. Oh man, that was a fail. Okay, and then we lost a couple pieces of lettuce. <clears throat> okay, now let's do a little plating. If we may. Try to make it look kind of pretty. Try to make it kind of well around here. It's my food, I can touch it with my fingers, it's fine. All right, how hot is this? It's still a little warm. She's a big old spoon for this. Let 
that one mushroom is just, there we go. And this is supposed to be four portions, but I'm making this a dinner salad, so mine's gonna be much larger. back for a shaving parm. I just want to get two salads plated here. Oh, crap. I'm just trying to avoid these edges, but I'll go back and clean it up. I'm trying to, you know, make it look pretty. You know what I'm saying? Because you uh, usually eat with your eyes first. I think we talked about this last time. Unless we're talking about fajitas, then you pretty much always eat with your nose first. <laughs> and this loose let us down in here. All right, let's get her some nice mushroom topping. Some of these big boys. Just about got this one, maybe a little bit more. A little bit more than that. I tried to get a bigger, a lot fell out of the spoon there. And Mary does love her mushrooms and that leaves enough for one small serving left. So now for this trick, um, hopefully this is gonna work okay. Because, uh, I don't know, <laughs> never done this. And I don't have the flattest piece of Parmesan to work with here either, so. So we're just basically gonna shave off a piece if we can and not kill ourselves. Yeah, okay, that works pretty well. Okay. Shit. <laughs> just going gentle, because I really don't want to cut myself. I do wish I had fresher Parmesan. Not that this is terribly old or anything, but. It just looks fancier when you got shaved. Okay, I'm gonna say that's one. Let me get a fresh paper towel for cleaning edges here, just for plating, for photography purposes. Yeah, that looks really good. <laughs> uh, I'm gonna move this chair before Jack decides to join us for dinner. All right, let me uh, go ahead and clean up my balsamic here, or I assume this one's mine. I don't know if Mary's gonna have the bigger one or the smaller one. These are not equally plated. Oh, crap, Eric. Come on, buddy. Sorry, I got a little ahead of myself and made it worse in a spot or two here. There we go. Yeah, this one's definitely a little smaller. So I need to find out where Mary is, but hold on, we're almost to the fun part. And this is meant to be like an appetizer salad, but like I said, I'm kind of just rocking it as my dinner salad tonight. Okay, we can go with that. All right. close-ups so you can get a little bit of a closer look at this mmm yummy honestly I feel like I should have shaved the Parmesan and done that under the mushrooms I think that would have looked nicer God, this place is such a mess right now 
Yeah, I'm kind of excited to dig in here and see what we think. So I told Mary it's ready. We'll see what happens in just a second. Okay, so Mary's taking the smaller one. Kind of figured, that's fine. Uh, Trying to see if I can get a thumbnail here. Uh, yeah. Okay, where's my angle? Here's my angle. Ooh. I think that's good. All right. <laughs> mm. It's got a little bite of almost everything but cheese. Mm. Sorry, I got excited. Mmm. Mmm. Oh, that's that is pretty tasty. Shoot, I'm on the wrong side of you. Very big pieces of lettuce here. Yeah, some of the bibs. I should have probably torn them, but. Mm. Mm, probably. <laughs> <laughs> Any bit that's not a scratch and post. Any bit. It's not a scratch and post, baby. <laughs> Grilled chicken would probably be pretty good in here. There's some bitterness and I can't track it down where it's coming from. That's probably from the romaine lettuce. Also, it might depend on... Here. Pick up your plate and switch with me, because I would like to eat. I can't and have you in the shot. There we go. <laughs> All right. Because um, I, I was reading something the other day. So I did some uh, roasted beets with the, a balsamic honey quite, mix. Quite tasty. Um, and I went with my balsamic vinegar because mm. I think you may have a pretty low quality balsamic vinegar. Mm, maybe. Because first of all, a, a good one shouldn't be watery. It should have some thickness to it. This has a little, okay. Mm. Um, well, I'll I look at it. I, I looked at your, your jar and compared it to mine. And, okay. And also there should be a little bit of sweetness to it as well. Mm. And it's, it's basically, if you spent $5 on it, you do not get quality. I have had that a while. I have no idea, but next time I buy some, I'll buy some fancier then. But honestly, the more I'm eating this, the more I'm actually quite liking this. Yeah, and I just got a big old mouthful of mushroom. That was pretty good. Mm-hmm. Mm. Yeah, I'm pretty happy with this. Now, how did they say, did they say what kind, specify what kind of dish to cook the mushrooms in? In a baking dish. Roast them in a baking dish. That is a baking dish. <laughs> Second guess in my technique. Well. Because I'm not sure that these seem very cold. So I'm wondering if they got like, some of my, my mushrooms, I, I, if you told me you roasted them, I wouldn't be able to tell you. So. I'm just saying. I'm no, you're, you gotta be honest, so I appreciate it, but I get to give you poop for being honest. This is like, usually if I'm, especially if I'm mm. only gonna do it for a few minutes, mm. I would want something with a more surface area. Make sure everything got cooked a little more thoroughly or evenly. I just think it's really good. Especially when you get like all the ingredients together, some of that cheese and mushrooms. And I like the balsamic vinaigrette I put together. I think it tasted really good on its own. I think it tastes good here. She's just a balsamic snob. I am. <laughs> and a mushroom snob. <laughs> I'm a popcorn frog. With a pizza butt and a hoodie ninja. What? Because my backpack's got jets. Yeah. All right, I say this is successful. I would, I would probably make this again. If I'm trying to be something fancy for a party and do it as an actual appetizer salad, I personally don't really think it needs much else. But if I try it again, 
I'll try getting the mushrooms out a little bit more, roast them a little more, and we'll try it with a higher quality vinegar. And maybe I'll remember to tell you, but I think this is pretty tasty. I'm actually quite pleased with it. So, uh, and again, I would do more of the correct lettuce, a little less of the romaine, but- um, Maybe tear it. I would tear it up. I didn't know. You didn't really say, so. Anyways, that's our cooking segment for this. There's plenty more to come. Oh, did you tell them I, <laughs> did you tell them what I did yesterday? No, because this has been all about the cooking. I haven't gotten anything else about our lives or our days yet. I was just cooking yesterday. But you just told them about your roasted beets. And I just said they were really good. And, and I had a slice. Basically, everything in yesterday's dinner came from the garden, so. Ah, that's okay. That is worth bragging about. And very, very cool. I am very tired of it. No, my arm's just tired. Um, no, I think that's really awesome. And apparently I'm gonna get some, what, uh, Thai dragon chilies this year. They're actually gonna work out pretty well. Looks like. And our hot banana pepper plant seems to be doing well. How about the rest? I haven't looked in a few days. Well, okay. I wouldn't say your hot banana pepper plants do really well. Mm. It just, I found out that if you get pepper plants that, that uh, put uh, peppers out early, you should just go ahead and pick them off because you really want them to focus on actually growing mm -hmm. as the plant itself. Mm -hmm. If they start putting out uh, fruit early, then they focus their energy on the fruit rather than getting any bigger and putting out more fruit. Okay. Uh, so I, probably that, that does not look great. It's still very yellow looking. Mm. It's get, the, the new stuff looks a little greener. I've been fertilizing the plants, so I'm hoping that maybe they'll turn around. Okay. Um, we've got some serranos coming on. Um, cool. Good. I'm happy about those. Let me some serrano. And I think we got some bell peppers in the process. Um, that's about it at the moment that I can think of. Okay. All right. Well, I'm going to finish my din din. And we'll be back with more stuff. So, it, one of the recommended is like a nice light white wine. I have my um, Barefoot Sauvignon Blanc. He's right, this goes really well. Mm. It kind of um, changes the palate. It's, <laughs> it's more of um, a contrasting pairing a little bit because it kind of cleanses your palate and you go back in and it really just kind of brightens some of these flavors a little bit. Hmm. So if you're into wines, pairings, that works. I still say, if I wanted to make this a real dinner salad, a little grilled chicken. Yeah, maybe some bacon, yeah, some grilled shrimp. Okay, more stuff. Hey, everybody's, look, 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 look. I did a much better job cleaning up. That's, that's not my mess. Um, <laughs> dishes, everybody cares. I don't know why, I just like showing it. Okay, maybe that's a little precarious, but whatever, it'll work. Not bad on the bottom, pretty good on the top. Uh, of course, I don't have the baking dish in here because the mushrooms are still in it. Oh, that's not good. Yeah, that's problematic. I gotta fix that. Anyways, that's the dishes. Okay, so one thing I'll tell you, and then I'm gonna deal with it real quick while I have decent light. I'm actually testing the light because I'm gonna shoot it on this. Uh, a little while ago, uh, the wonderful people from Horror Pack reached out to me and asked if I would be interested in doing an unboxing of one. I'm like, free horror movies? Yeah. So uh, there is a long story about that with my P.O. box that I'll tell you a little bit later. But I was able to go grab this today, so I'm about to shoot an unboxing. Um, and then hopefully one of these movies will be something Mary can watch. I am hoping for some really cheesy shark movie in here. I'd like to watch something later tonight. Obviously, I'm not going to spoil in this because this vlog will come out before that unboxing comes out. But be on the lookout for that awesome bonus unboxing. Um, just, you know, because they wanted to send me one. And I was like, yeah, I kind of miss Horror Pack. I'm not going to resubscribe, but I kind of miss it. So I'm going to shoot that while I still have some good light. And uh, it's what? It's like uh, 7.34 right now. So I still got plenty to do, but, you know, um, including trailers and stuff and uh, the Patreon video. But uh, we'll get there. Mary and I will definitely be able to watch at least Miss Marvel. Maybe we'll get to some AGT. We'll see. But anyways, I'm going to go get me some horror movies. All right, let's talk about yesterday just real quick. Let's go ahead and do this. Look at this. Look at this dusty old antiquated phone. Ooh, gross. Um, this is Galaxy, Android Galaxy S10. I'm using my iPhone 12 Max Pro Max or 13 Pro Max. I don't remember. Anyways, the battery on this thing was like requesting recycling and <laughs> this thing was starting to turn to crap. So your boy actually went out and upgraded 
to the uh, S22 Ultra, which I'm pretty happy with so far. Um, I mean, you know, just better battery, better all that, a little bit bigger, better screen, you know, the typical phone upgrades. I did do the trade-in, so I do need to wipe this now that I've done it and take it back in because I got an $800 credit. The best part is with all the discounts and deals, you know, doing a payment plan on that, it didn't change our bill at all. So essentially it's a free phone upgrade. Uh, one thing that is neat, it does have a built-in stylus, which is kind of just a neat little touch. Um, just got a clear case because it was what they had. But I'm really excited about the cameras and I'm really excited to try these out. Probably at the Jamboree will be my first real attempt because we have like four actual lenses in here. And again, phone lenses are never gonna be good as, as good as like, you know, high-end cameras, but they just keep getting better and better. And this has an ultra wide that is 108 megapixel frame on that ultra wide, the 0.6. And I think there's a, there's a 10X zoom on here, and I'm pretty sure the 10X zoom is even a 40 megapixel. It might be 30. The front-facing camera on this son of a bitch is 40 megapixel. Uh, the S22 Plus is only like 10 or whatever. So again, since I predominantly use this as my main phone and my main camera, I'm really excited to start utilizing that more and more. I guess actually I took uh, photos of tonight's dinner, so. Anyways, I did make the mistake of telling it to transfer every single thing. So it took like eight hours to transfer all my photos and videos. I had over 10,000, actually I had over 14,000 uh, pictures on, the, on that phone alone. <laughs> that phone was a 128 megs, I mean 128 gigs with a SD card slot. I think I had a 64 gig in there. The new ones don't have SD card slots, but this is the 512 gig. So that should do me pretty well. And of course it just transferred everything over other than having to re-log into a bunch of crap. Uh, so pretty happy about it. And the other neat thing too is my Apple AirPods have been kind of starting to crap out. And uh, I was debating about going up to the Pro AirPods and I still might get those in the future. But when I bought this phone, I got a deal. Uh, they had the Galaxy Buds Pro that are normally $200 for $100 off. Everybody else has them on sale for $50 off, but $100 off is better than $50 off. So I got those and I started playing with them last night and they are pretty cool. Here, look, let's see if I can do this where you can kind of see my face while I'm, there we go. Uh, <laughs> so this is just a fun shot. That's almost like the vlog shot, phoneception. Um, but of course I still film if, in case you're wondering because the galaxies do not like communicating with the Mac ecosystem. Uh, I do still like to use the iPhone for all my video for all that airplay dropping and all that stuff. So. That's a big part of why I have two phones. <laughs> that and technically the iPhone is my business phone, so I have a business number for people. Um, so I don't get them mixed up with my home phone that I never answer, uh, <laughs> unless I am expecting you. But I'm, I'm actually quite excited about it until you actually realize, oh, it's just, a, it's just a phone. It still does all the same stuff I did. So until I really get to really put the camera to the test, I, I'm not too excited about it, except the stylus is pretty neat. And that'll help because a lot of times I do end up having to sign like digital contracts and stuff for some of the stuff I do. So um, that'll make it a little bit better than whew, those messy, messy finger signs. But anyways, that's uh, one really cool thing I just got uh, this week. Although and this made me very happy, but then the rest of my day, it ended up getting a little crappy, but we've sorted it. We'll talk about that in a minute. Might as well do as best I can with what I got in the haul this month. Um, we got the Arrow video. This is one of my all time favorite films. Uh, 4K edition of True Romance. It has the theatrical and the director's cut, both in 4K. This includes the Blu-ray, I believe, because this is the ultimate collector's edition. I could be wrong about that. I'm not, yeah, dual format. And um, I love this movie. I'm excited about that book. And especially after watching Elvis, I mean, think about this cast, man. Like Gary Oldman, Christopher Walken, Dennis Hopper, Brad Pitt, Patricia Arquette, Christian Slater. Um, I guess I just named everybody on there. Michael Madsen, Michael Rappaport, Bronson Pinchow. I mean, <laughs> written by uh, Quentin Tarantino, directed by Tony Scott, like in his peak with an amazing soundtrack. So yeah, I adore that movie and I can't wait to check it out. I don't think I have anything over there worth showing as a thing. I think I showed you this all last week. I don't collect Marvel Legends, but I had to get my my lady, my Mighty Thor. I needed that. Uh, I did, oh yeah, found this. Didn't realize it was a thing, went to GameStop. It's actually on the box. I don't have anybody from this wave, but since Mary and I have all the exclusive ramen eating ones, the noodle eating ones, we had to get that. It was on a clearance table and it was uh, $7.99. It had a $5 coupon, so we got it for three bucks. Hi, uh, Secrets of Dumbledore. I heard it's not bad. I heard it's actually m good. And this guy's like, that's actually a really good movie when I bought it. And I was like, really? Cause I'm dreading it. The last one was a struggle. He's like, yeah, the last one was pretty awful. So it's like, well, as long as you agree the last one was awful and tell me this one's good, you don't have to be as worried. 
This I'm very, 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 very excited about. One of my all-time favorite scores. Finally got my vinyl copy. Dario Argento's Suspiria. Witch, 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 witch. Um, I can't show you over there because I just did the horror pack thing and I don't want to spoil it. And I think that sums up the whole video other than my... Yeah, you know, and I bought some games, but we'll talk about game stuff in the game time. All right, let's talk some movies. Um, so I'm gonna go ahead and tell you, uh, I watched Beavis and Butthead do America. I mean, I'm sorry, <laughs> do the universe. Uh, long story short, huge Beavis and Butthead fan way back in the day, back in school, uh, even outside of school. My best friend at the time became my, my roommate back in the day. Um, everybody referred to us as Beavis and Butthead. Uh, ironically, I was the Beavis because I'm higher energy and he was the butthead. He was more chill, even though my last name is Butts. But um, love them, love the videos, love the, the show, the reboot even. And of course, Do America was fantastic. So I was very excited for this movie. And boy, it didn't disappoint. I had huge expectations for it and I had a blast with it. From the get go, um, you know, you get some different style but then it immediately comes back i'm gonna do this no spoiler but it immediately comes back to like the classic style just better because technology and budgets but um man i was laughing so hard at some of the stuff in here that i almost had to grab the pillow i yell into when i watch star wars things at three in the morning so i didn't make wake mary up because it was killing me again it's another one of those their desire to have sex that drives them completely uh coupled with uh, other people all being morons and having an insane misunderstanding takes Beavis and Butthead on an incredible adventure that just, the pace is amazing. It just flows. You're never bored. It never drags. Uh, it just gets crazier and crazier and more and more ridiculous. And there's all those kind of jokes where you kind of see it ahead of all the characters in that great way of like, oh no, oh no, I know where this is going. Oh no, are they really going to do that? And then they really do that. Um... I did predict in my trailer reaction that it was multiverse. It's not really, I would go more in the line of something like Beavis and Butthead do Inception than the multiverse of madness. But you do get some tastes of that and it is incredibly clever. Um, it's not, it's still the same old Beavis and Butthead too. Like, and you get cameos from almost everybody. I wouldn't say get excited for the cameos because they really are just like, oh, they're pretty much all in the background at one point or another. Just about anybody you can think of. But um, with uh, one, you know, character I'd kind of forgotten about coming back in the beginning. And just the whole way it even starts off is hilarious. And then some of the ridiculous things like why a judge makes a decision and then how that comes back later is so freaking funny. And um, they do a really good job of bringing Beavis and Butthead into modern time uh, while still making it feel like vintage Beavis and Butthead. This is on Paramount+. Plus. If you have Paramount Plus and you love Beavis and Butthead, go watch it. Apparently they're adding the music videos back to the original series as well. I don't know if they've 100% done that, but I love this movie. Like I said, went in with high expectations, came out incredibly pleased, uh, and it's something I will watch again and again and again. Go check it out. Or I'll kick you in the nuts. I almost went to Cartman. Yeah. I'm all shook up on hey, April. How hey. you doing? I have no else. Uh, so anyways, we saw Baz Luhrmann's Elvis. Both big Baz Luhrmann fans. Mm -hmm. uh, you're more Moulin Rouge, I'm more mm -hmm. Romeo and Juliet. Yeah. Both love them. I realized I haven't watched The Great Gatsby yet. I need I've to fix that. I've watched it, but I don't really remember it. We need to fix that. Because again, I love me some Baz Luhrmann. Uh, had a blast with this. We saw, I thought we were seeing it in IMAX, but they couldn't book it in IMAX because Jurassic World. We saw it in RPX, which is another large format thing, Regal style. Uh, had a blast with it. Mm -hmm. Again, huge expectations for this because of Baz Luhrmann. I don't think either of us are like the biggest Elvis fans in the world, but no. appreciate him. I probably like him a bit more than you do because I like a lot of that era, uh, and that style of music, rockabilly and all that. Um, but we really were going because we were Baz Luhrmann fans and we were not disappointed. Although I'm going to say it, it, it's not the most Baz Luhrmann, Baz Luhrmann is ever Baz Luhrmann, but that I, my personal theory is that Elvis was so over the top to begin with that this seems normal. Well, <laughs> there's also kind of a theory, and this isn't really spoilers. We're going to keep it very general and very vague. But there's also a, a theory I heard somebody say that I think makes perfect sense, that it starts off very Baz Luhrmann. And in the early yeah. days when Elvis's career is bonkers, the movie is bonkers. But then when it starts getting more and more into the downward spiral of things not going so great, 
the stylization of the movie really starts taking a step back. Uh, and, and I think that's okay. actually kind of brilliant. Um, and then I think you're right. And I think sometimes the Baz Luhrmann is there, but because Elvis is so over the top, you don't feel it as much. But yeah. I feel satisfied with the amount of Baz Luhrmann yeah. Luhrmanning I got out of this. Uh, yeah. And Austin Butler. <laughs> fucking give him the Oscar. I can't imagine <laughs> anybody giving a greater performance this year. That was just absolutely mesmerizing. And man, I wish I could remember what, because it turns out we have seen him in something recently. And now really? I cannot remember what it was. I didn't have my magical answer uh, device on me. I can use my magical answering device. Oh, the, the new one? Yeah, you can play with the new one. I already told him about all that. Okay. It's set up just like my old one, so if you're looking for Google, there you go. Thank you. Uh, <laughs> but uh, listen, I love this. Like the spastic style, the operatic punk rock cocaine fueled insanity is there right from the beginning. I Some people, like, who was it? Uh, Doug, uh, Cinema, uh, no, uh, Channel Awesome Doug was... Uh, saying like he thinks Tom Hanks was like razzy in this. I'm like, mm, I disagree with that. I think Tom Hanks was great as a very villainous character. It's he, very much a deal with a devil kind of movie. Well, he's also very much an unreliable narrator. Yeah, so we have that. And this is all set up in the beginning, so we're really not ruining anything here. Um, uh, let's see, Once Upon a Time in Hollywood. Well, yeah, but that's not what I'm remembering him from. The Dead Don't Die, I don't remember from that either. But, um, yeah, let's see all filmography. Doom Part 2. Well, we haven't seen Doom Part 2 yet. <laughs> uh, we're almost done with this part, everybody, but there was something... Oh, Yoga Hosers! I knew him from Yoga Hosers. That's what oh. I was thinking of, so you wouldn't, but... Oh! Oh, he was in three episodes of Arrow. Mm-hmm. Anyways, he is phenomenal, that being <laughs> the point. Here, I'll take that back. Don't don't break it! You're gonna... No, I'm just I'm kidding. <laughs> I'm kidding. You'd be fine. Um... I'm very warm. I know it's very See, cute, but I'm very warm. You are not warm. I'm, you're, you're, you're almost room temperature. I, okay, maybe I don't feel warm, but I'm I'm running hot on the inside because I'm doing so much. <laughs> I still have to go do trailers. I don't need to get all sweaty, man. <laughs> that was fast. <laughs> I don't I don't know. Um. Yeah, Elvis, let's get back on track. Uh, so the movie's great. Loved it. The romanticism. I did get some tears by the end because it's just sad, but also beautifully done. Um, and yeah, like the music, the, the use of music and the montage of music and the yeah. jumping back and forth between versions and just that spirituality of, you know, him wanting to create things and say things that matter and how he's fighting against mm -hmm. the system. And, and like you forget, and this is probably a little timely, but you forget how prudish everything was in this country in his era and like how insane it was. Like they show kind of what was the, what was the party that was like for like white Christians in America or whatever. Like there's like a whole senator thing fighting against them. And it's like, God damn, this is um, more timely than it should be. Uh, <laughs> what was it? Uh, they did do the Nixon thing though, which was interesting. Yeah, I was kind of waiting to see if, but they definitely skipped big sections of his life. But again, I, I was wondering, now apparently people that love Elvis and went to see Elvis, we actually saw a lady in full Elvis costume. It's pretty yeah. cute. Um, I do wonder how they feel about it. It seems like they loved it too. But I think if you were really going in for a full Elvis biopic, I feel like you might be disappointed, mm -hmm. especially if you were unfamiliar with the works of Baz Luhrmann because this really, it's not so Why much about. Right, I mean, things like that and just the insane, like, <laughs> visuals and stuff and transitions. I like somebody likened it to, like, uh, you know, it, it's kind of made in the style of the Wachowski Speed Racer. And I'm like, yeah, that's also probably why I, I mean, not as not as over the top as Speed Racer, which is one of my favorite movies of all time. I, I would be afraid of somebody comparing it to, like, one of those, the, the Hallmark biopics. Yeah, if you're looking for that, you're going to be disappointed. Like... Well, just in terms of, I, I think they play a bit fast and loose with their stuff, too. That I got you. Yeah, yeah. This may not be 100% historically accurate. It's certainly a from a certain <laughs> point of view type of movie, but okay. it is an experience. It is beautifully done. Costumes are amazing. Um, that, that you get to see. There's a scene. I don't know how real it is, but the scene where they kind of create that famous Elvis intro music uh -huh. with his new huge band that just... Yeah. The uh, 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 now I can't even now I'm blanking on the theme. I was gonna stick it back in our heads. Da, da, oh yeah, da 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 <laughs> da, 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 da. Although then I always want to change it into game show music. Da 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 da. Yeah, yeah, it does that. <laughs> yeah, it's very similar uh, to that. But 
They said we had the guy from uh, play Billy on Stranger Things. Yeah, he's he's like one of the rogue TV directors. That's all we'll really tell you. But you may see this guy and be like, why is he so familiar? It's freaking Billy from Stranger Things. And he had the kid from uh, 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 the, the dog movie last year. Uh, was didn't have actually a dog in it. Benedict Cumberbatch. Oh, the power of the dog. Thank you. That kid was in it. Yeah. Who was he? He was. You can't spoil other movies, man. <laughs> that is still pretty reason. So there was a little bit of confusion. I have to cut out there because she. I thought she was spoiling Elvis, and then she had to explain to me what she was talking about. And then it's like, well, you can't spoil that movie. She gives away the end. So. Um, Not bad. The kid from The Power of the Dog is in this movie. Yeah, he's he, he plays he in the, Elvis. He's in the very beginning. He's the one that's going like, "Hey, I got the new album." Oh, that's who that kid was. Yes. Oh, I didn't recognize that. It becomes like a big old Elvis wannabe in a great way. Yeah. That's really charming. Yeah, that was really cool. And I like how they jump around with the time and everything mm -hmm. too. Um, I like Tom Hanks, the unreliable narrator, like you're saying. That style of it was really... Mm -hmm. Listen, it's just a great fucking movie, man. Um, it's an experience. It's definitely one worth going to theaters, seeing it on the biggest screen in the loudest system you can, especially if you're a Baz Luhrmann fan. Um, yeah, highly recommended. Yeah? Mm -hmm. I expect to see it get a lot of Oscar nominations. It, it deserves them. It's fantastic. Mm -hmm. All right, let's talk about something else. <sighs> Wedding updates! When two heads become one The thing with two heads The less edgy remake Cause we're both white I guess it could be a gender version It's a very famous B-movie From the 50s, 60s the, the thing with two head Where it's like a notorious racist white dude Gets the uh, head of a black inmate Sewn onto his body And they have to work together to get away Okay Yeah, it's Joe Don Baker I want to say Anyways, uh, so wedding update I have a plan. Do you now? I talked to somebody else who recently got married. They're like, ah, we didn't put our invitations out for like six weeks. She'll be fine. Um, I'm, I'm about to. That's my, hopefully my plan this weekend, but there's a lot going on. Um, because we got furniture to pick up and a bunch of stuff. But, um, and then, you know, getting ready for the jamboree. I got to try and get an oil change, which I may have to try and do on Saturday if they're available Saturday. Because dad reminded me, I was like, Monday's my day to do it. He's like, that's July 4th. I was like, <gasps> Oh, things will be closed. Crap. Um, <laughs> yeah, did you call anybody today? Not yet, because I'm busy doing the other things like I still got to tell them about. But wedding. Um, so basically, it turns out, okay, so wedding license is not going to be that hard. We're not too worried about that. And then uh, basically what the lady said to me is like, what you really should probably be worrying about is the dress. Which I'm working on. Yes. Now. I was actually working on when he pulled me up to do this. <laughs> yes. Well, because also to uh, this Bethany uh, from, you know, is there, um, she was uh no, I'm sorry, Beth, not Bethany, different people. Um, but they were, um, she was telling me because they recently got married. And, uh, but then as, because she's like, yeah, because you know if you need alterations and materials and blah, blah, all this stuff can take time and shipping delays and blah, blah, blah. And she, she felt a little bit easier about it when I said you were maybe just going to kind of just buy something or have your you and your mom, because your mom's a seamstress and you make a lot of costumes. And she's like, oh, okay, then you're probably mm -hmm. fine then. Because um, apparently the things that could end up taking long are when we have to involve other people. My, my philosophy is if I can avoid an actual wedding place, I'm going to. That makes because sense. Because the upchar, the, the wedding tax mm -hmm. is insane. And we're already spending a good deal enough on this, although we are really still going to get on about the food. But um, at this point, I'm like, do I even send out, like if I'm going to bother messaging everybody to be like, hey, send me your email so I can send you a proper invitation. I'm like, why don't I just invite them just invite them that way just start getting them on the damn list so we know because someone because in some ways having that invitation is helpful for people to go like oh fuck i almost forgot about this do we really okay fine that's fair well i'll try to do it i don't know if i can do it before the jamboree i hope this is gonna be a busy week man but um yeah i mean one way or another we'll get married i just may have to eat a lot of Goat cheese stuff, roasted red pepper, chicken wrap, breaded fried rollinos, and and portobellas, tomatoes, balsamic <laughs> drizzle, red onion shaved, and spaghetti and meatballs for me and for us. Nobody's invited because I'm gonna eat all the food. <laughs> I think that's all we really got. We don't really have a lot more, right? No. Anything else on the wedding? No, no I, I, I've got bride maids. I need to get them together. I need to party with my, my dude bros. Make sure that's all still good. Figure out what what if, what theme we're doing, if anything. Depending on her dress, I was like, we'll be doctors. We'll be various Doctor Who doctors, but I don't know. Probably not. 
Okay. All right. All right, that's that. Uh, I don't know if Mary's in anything else today, so. Bye. Bye. <laughs> All right, so I'm just gonna throw this, let's do this segment. It's, I had a day, yesterday I had a day. Uh, kind of a little bit of a week, maybe. Um, yesterday was actually pretty great. So normally on Tuesdays I go out shopping, um, you know, usually do my groceries, although I did it early. We, we go get wine and, and booze for whatever for the week. Go to Best Buy and pick up new movies, which is getting harder and harder as they're completely phasing out physical media. You know, check out GameStop, all that kind of stuff. Just see what's new and everything. Um, so, but I knew I wanted to look into my phone upgrade because I was like, well, before the Jamboree, let's see if we can get that worked out. So again, went to the AT&T store, turned out great, you know, uh, like we, like I already discussed, I got my phone for free. Also, um, we're looking into this. So if anybody has experience with this or thoughts on this, please, by all means, throw me uh, your experience. That direct TV streaming stuff, they always try to sell me on at the AT&T store. Never paid attention to it before. But this time the guy mentioned, he noticed dad and I, you know, we live at different addresses. Um, we're on like a big family plan, Mary's on and all that. And uh, he, he pointed out that you can do one cable account for both houses, which easily cuts our cable bill in half. Plus some other benefits. Um, like, you know, I use the Spectrum app on like a TCL TV, a Roku TV. It's mostly great, but you can only use the Spectrum cable app when it's tied to my Wi-Fi so they know I'm that customer. However, with this DirecTV stuff, no, it's everywhere. And it's cloud DVR storage, and it's all the channels we have and all that. And I'm like, oh, that sounds really nice. And the fact we can cut our cable bills in half because I, uh, we had, we're past, we're about hitting that two year period where we got a lot of discounts when we signed up that are cutting off now. So my cable bill is getting crazy pricey again. And um, so, so that's pretty cool. So we had a really good experience there. Got the phone, got the earbuds, or the Buds Pro, whatever, like I was telling you about and all that. And um, then I was waiting on this horror pack I told you about to come in. And boy, this was like what soured my day. <laughs> but I eventually got over it. Um, went to my P.O. Box, which I hadn't heard anything from my P.O. Box in a long time. And I just assumed where I stopped doing unboxings and all this stuff that, you know, I wasn't getting a lot of promo stuff sent and whatever. Well, I go in there and I open up my box and I have actual mail, which is weird. Uh, I got a piece of fan mail. I don't usually get mail mail. And then uh, this nice company sent me some like horror bookmarks all the way back in February. And there was somebody else's mail from February that wasn't mine in Chicago, Illinois. And um, I had a note in there that my box had expired in October and that note was from March. And I'm like, how has no one informed me about any of this? So that was enough of the thing. There was a huge line and like one newish lady working. And <laughs> now I knew I had a package, my horror pack, because I was watching the tracking on it, not because the uh, uh, PO box people told me. And uh, so I finally get through line and you know, I'm like, oh, well here first, I got a few things. I thought it was gonna be something easy, but I got a few things. One, uh, here's this piece of mail, ain't mine. Two, my box was supposed to be on auto renew. It was on auto renew for years. And then this has been stuck in here since March. I don't know why I haven't heard anything. She's like, oh, that's weird. And she needed the manager and the manager only works till three. And it's like, oh, I work night shift hours essentially. I, I'm getting anywhere before three is difficult for me. Um, so I was like, okay, I'll take your number and I'll have him call you and all that kind of stuff. And I was like, okay, fine. It doesn't seem to work in the past, but um, so then I asked about my package, which was clearly delivered there and, uh, she could not find it and I'm not in the system anymore and all of that. And then like, I, I want to ask more. I want to ask her to look a few other places, but the line is just piling up behind me and it's getting warm. There's like pregnant lady in line and all this is like, well, I can't really hold this up when I know this, this young lady is not gonna be able to do anything for me, <laughs> uh, more than what she's offered. It was frustrating. And as usual, I try to hold my shit together cause I know it ain't her fault. I mean, you could probably tell I was getting frustrated at the situation, but I do tend to, when I, that happens, try to apologize to the person and be like, I don't, I, like, I hope I'm not coming across as rude to you because I know it's not your fault. I'm just, obviously the situation is uh, unexpected and frustrating. She was very, very understanding. Anyway, so today it all got sorted. Um, the manager called, left me a message. I called back before three. Uh, turns out they did a computer changeover last October. Completely new system. They can kind of auto renew the box, but they can't keep credit cards on file to charge anymore and blah, blah, blah. Uh, so I was like, well, that's why they couldn't fix it last year. <laughs> so anyways, he put me back in the system, got it all up and running, just went ahead and charged me for those months and then all the way through next October. So we're back on the same thing. And he told me they definitely did have the package. It was just on the back table because they didn't have anywhere 
since I wasn't in the system at the time, they couldn't log it into my box and blah, 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 blah. So I went down today and that same young lady was there and she remembered me and she was very, very nice. And I apologized again. She's like, no, 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 you were fine. You were, cause I was like, I hope I wasn't like really angry or anything. Cause I don't like to do that. Um, but anyway, so she was really cool. Got the box, got it all sorted. So yay. <laughs> so yeah, that was kind of my day. So also last night I was going to come home and um, I was just going to have like a bagel and cream cheese and some turkey, maybe make some bacon for it. Really nice light, but I needed to pick me up. So I made chicken nuggets. <laughs> I made a bunch of chicken nuggets and a uh, very late shower. And then Mary and I sat down and uh, watched, uh, ooh, the first two episodes of Only Murders in the Building, which are already amazing. Okay, second season is what she yelled out. But of course, we'll tell you about that when we finish the season. We won't spoil anything, but I'll tell you, it's if you ain't watching that show, you're missing out. That show is amazing. It's on Hulu. Okay, I think that's that. I should probably go do my other work. I know we still gotta talk about games and do a wrap up. There might be something else. Oh, and make a cocktail. I don't know what yet. Um, I've been experimenting with things, so we'll talk about that later. But let me go do my other work and drink some more wine. See you in a bit. Cocktail time. It's, it's late. What, what, what? <laughs> it's late. It's later than it should be. No, you don't have to. I was just gonna say, I may not make cocktails every video anymore, or at least not new cocktails, because uh, there's still plenty of things for me to try, but I'm running out of things. Also, I was gonna bring this up, but I figured I'd wait for this segment. Um, what is it, Cuba Libre? Cuba, Cuba Libre, yeah. So not that, but <laughs> I did recently discover, because I'm having a real hard time finding Canadian dry uh, club soda. Uh, I did vodka, I've done vodka and Coca-Cola before, and I like Coke, but I'm not a huge fan, unless it's like something really salty. Because it leave that cloying sweetness, but I like the flavor going down more than Pepsi. Uh, <laughs> really? Yeah, I know. Uh, so recently, I had some lime juice. I poured that. I poured like half and a half a lime worth of lime juice into Coke and vodka, and I was like, "Oh God, damn!" I was not prepared for that. I made that again the other night. So then, also, I made another drink the other night. I did three ounces of lemon vodka, four or five ounces of orange juice, and then half a lime worth of fresh squeezed lime juice. Beautiful. But I, after many, many struggles of figuring out what the hell I'm making now, I thought, fuck it, we're gonna make a gin martini, a more tr slightly more traditional dirty martini. Mary and I are frustrated. We spent time trying to figure out, is this dry gin? There's no like just easy article online of these constitute dry gins, these do that. Well, I found something on Hendrix that says that something keeps it from qualifying for being a London dry, whereas the aviator gin that we have is American dry. And I've had bartenders tell me that aviator is really only good for making an aviator cocktail and that Hendrix gin is the more neutral dry gin. I don't know, they didn't say dry. I think Tanqueray is probably your better bet. Yeah, I have Hendrix and I have aviator, so fuck it, all right? We're gonna make... I didn't know I was that drunk. I didn't have that much to eat, I guess. Oh, I gotta clean those dishes out. Okay. Um, wow, this is this is fun. We got our usual gin. We got our, our, our vermouth that people don't like, but I like. Fuck it, there's a lot of olive juice in here. I don't know if a jalapeno shit will make a difference. Uh, I'm gonna... <laughs> Should I double this recipe? Because this is only gonna be about a three and a half ounce drink if I don't double it. I, I would say, since you're not sure how the jalapeno is gonna go down, maybe just make yes. a single. Okay, we're gonna double it, correct. <laughs> well, I have a big martini glass. Uh, I don't want to listen to anybody. I don't want to do anything. I have to go edit a shit ton of stuff and do laundry and take out the trash. And it's already like midnight. And I got to schedule shit. <sighs> I'm in for a rough night. And I want to watch movies from Horror Pack. <sighs> All right. So anyways, if it was a single, it would take two ounces of gin. But we're going to make it a double. So I'm going to go ahead and pour in four ounces of Hendrix gin. Oh, that's a little heavy. We'll make the next one a little light. <laughs> well, I mean, just It'll by be it. be just as heavy. Just by a touch. This is just a hard bottle to pour straight out of. I think that about constitutes it. See, see, you doubt me and hold on. this is also the bottle. I give you poops. I have plenty of poops. Do you? Just like Napoleon. <laughs> oh, fuck. Hey, see, that's what I, this bottle, uh, I like We have gin. pour spots, you know. But I'm not gonna put a pour spot on this because it's in bugs and cat hair because we don't it's not like we're a bar and we're like constantly using it you know what i mean you just put this and cap on top it's dust fine. oh yeah that's gonna look beautiful on my booze shelf because you know 
All right, so a single has half an ounce of dry vermouth. We're gonna put in an ounce of dry vermouth. I like vermouth. A lot of people don't, but I like it. So I don't mind putting that in there. That's good. Yeah. I mean, I know, I'm sure I sound like I don't need another drink, but I've got hours of work still to do. <laughs> I'll be editing for another three hours minimum. And then maybe watching a movie. And it's beautiful out. I wanna go party on the deck and rock and roll. Seventy degrees out. Is it? Oh, it's fucking perfect. Okay, now this calls for three quarter ounce of olive brine, but I like mine fucking dirty, and that's for a single. So I was gonna bump that to an ounce for a single and do at least two ounces for um, this. July twenty twenty three. We're good. It's like an eye booger. <laughs> Tasty. At least two ounces. Whoops. That might be closer to two and a half. That was a, an insincere whoops because I did that on purpose. Mm. I like it filthy. Filthy. That's how I order them. I'm like, when I order a martini, Mary can attest. I'm like, I would like a filthy, dirty martini. Okay. Ice in the shaker, and I'll grab the glass while I'm here. Uh, yeah. Oh, oh, I the meat. Oh, I don't know how much ice to put in here. Shit. That's fine. That's plenty. You don't need to put in a ton. Right. That's what I did. I just put about five. You still have to pour it out. I put about five or six cubes. One, two, three, six cubes of ice. And I, I can already tell it's already chilling the shaker. Oh, we're on tight. We're on tight. We shake it. This recipe comes from, oh my God, the fuck is this website? Something, 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 Etienne beats your meat. What? I'm not even making that up. Hold on, hold, hold on. on. Let me, let me, let me. Turn that around. Well, I need to pour, why won't you do the thing where you do the thing and I can see what I'm doing? Ah, why are you playing an ad? No, why are you upside down too? Fuck, how do I get out of the... Fuck you. No, fuck you. Sietan beats your meat? S-E-I-T-A-N? What? Here, look, look, it's not, it's not, I'm not. S-E-I beats your meat.com. Sietan beats, beats, beats your, your meat. meat. Com. I hardly know you. Okay. We got our chilled martini glass. I just throw it in the freezer. Pro chefs, pro chefs. Pro bartenders will just write when they start to make the drink, uh, fill the glass with ice. Oh God, I want this. This is what I don't like about shakers. Uh. Uh. I'm not as drunk as you think I am. So oh, there we for, go. For, if you're wondering what that is. Yes, thank you, Mary. Thank you for the assist on the clarification. I appreciate that. Oh, it leaked out when I did that. Yeah. Uh, personally, I like the thing where you have like the two uh, tall cups that kind of fit uh, into each other. Oh, that's a lot of martini. And uh, uh, it tastes really good. Okay, I'm sorry. Two tall cups. Yeah, it's oh. like, it's like usually a milk cup and a glass cup, and you just put one on top of the other, and you shake it like that, and then you just use a strainer. Right. I think that you can do that with that, but I don't know what glass I use. Oh, fuck me. I didn't grab a thing. It's got to have gollops. you got to put gollops in your tarmini. Okay. He's trying to eat the tape. He's not even trying to get out. Oh, there's Jack at the next to him. Well, Jack's just curious about stuff. All you're gonna miss is Eric is gonna spear some martinis. I'm gonna do three, I mean, mart I'm gonna spear martinis, Mary. I'm gonna put martinis on this spear and then put them in my olives. Okay, this 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 jar is almost empty. It's making life very difficult. It should be easier if it's empty. You'd think, but then you're not as me as drunk I am. Do you want me to try? No, I we'll get it. It's about me making the drinks, not you making the drinks for me. 
I almost got that one. It's almost in. Ah, uh, ah, uh, ah, uh, oh no. It was, it almost got, oh, that's a, that's a shitty spear job here. There, there we go. Can I just like get one started to bring it out? You know what, fuck me. Oh, yeah, yeah. Ay, ay, ay. Fuck this, we have a thousand fucking forks. I'm going to use some. <laughs> so, I'm gonna go with the bar tradition of only odd numbers because it is very bad luck to have even numbers. I don't believe in that kind of, ooh, there's a spare jalapeno. Oh no, oh no! <laughs> Shit. Oh, yeah. Fuck you, jalapeno, come back. That's a different jalapeno, but I'll take it. I'm gonna put the jalapeno between there and this. Aaron, do not eat the tape. Yeah, we may have to. Oh, now that is a goddamn. Huge martini. Yes. I really hope this is good. I'm not trying it. Well, you don't like olives okay. that much, or at least not like I, Okay, I don't like green olives, I don't really like jalapenos, and I don't really like gin. Or vermouth. <laughs> is there anything in here that you like? Not really. The martini glass? The ice water? Fuck, that's much more than I thought it would be. I wonder if they can hear that. <laughs> Together. It's definitely different than a vodka martini. I don't get a lot of the jalapeno, which is fine because I wasn't trying to make it a jalapeno one. That's actually pretty good. It's definitely different. I do think I prefer the vodka martini because that gin is bringing just that slight different flavor to it. It's not spicy. You could try this. I know you don't I really. I don't really want okay, to. Okay, don't. That's fine. Normally, I'm, I'm up for just about anything. One of us. One of us. I'm kidding. But when, I'm kidding. when everything is consisting of things that you don't really like, I, I, I don't see it magically saying because it's good. That I was saying is, it's impossible. I was going to say, that's not entirely true. But I get where you're coming from, but it's not entirely true. Because sometimes a mix of ingredients you hate can turn into something magical that you're like, holy shit, why is that so good? And now in hindsight, you know what I should have done? I should have finally tried my jalapeno brine, my pickled jalapeno teeny. Uh, you know, because we've done the olive teenies, we've done the pickle teenies. Uh -huh. It would have been kind of interesting. Uh -huh. Maybe next time. If you remember. On Survivor. Any other drink topics? No, I probably got to finish this vlog. Not sponsored. Cheers. Boom. <laughs> okay. Uh, I just, I did a lot of work. Let's, let's do work and Adobe bitching. This is a segment. It's 1.05 a.m. Um, so I shot my five trailers for the week. Uh, I just finished editing those, doing the thumbnails. We're going to be rendering and exporting as I'm filming the rest of this vlog. Still enjoying my martini. Having a good time with that. Got the vlog all processed except this and from here on. Uh, whatever, man. I'm not gonna be able to schedule everything. Usually on Thursdays, I try, I mean on Wednesdays, I try to have everything done so I can enjoy my Thursday. I'm gonna have to work on Thursday. There's just no way around it. It's too late. I'm, I don't have, I even have the trailers uploaded yet. And I'm pretty drunk and I need to watch a movie and I still gotta get trash and blah, blah, blah. So, Here's the thing, let's do the Adobe bitching. There must have been an update recently. I am, it's so fucking annoying now. They broke media encoder connection for me. My typical workflow is I would edit a bunch of stuff, render a bunch of stuff, and then I would add it as a batch export to media encoder. What this means, if you're unfamiliar with how this works, is you have to basically, at the end of the day, you have to output a final video file that I upload, right? Um, so you can do one video at a time straight out of Adobe or what you, what I would always do is use media encoder where I could say, okay, do this video and when that one's done, do this video when that one's done, do this video. So I could edit, render a whole bunch of videos, set them up for export and then walk away for a while. They broke that. I now have to bring one video at a time out of Adobe. That is very, very annoying. So that's one thing. 
Um, they also, what I noticed today, I had to close down my program and reopen it. So before you can export and create that finalized video file, you have to render it. You have to basically tell the computer, look at every frame and whatever effects or color correction I've added, overlays, whatever, and make that a thing that can be put out as a video file. Usually when you do that, it saves all that in a folder. And if you close the program, open the program, once you've done that and you save, it's done. This is the first time I opened it now and things that had previously been rendered are no longer rendered. And it's creating new folders every time I open this to render into and apparently not saving those renders. Luckily, that doesn't really fuck up my workflow as I don't, you know, I tend to export everything before I would ever close the program. On rare occasion, there's an exception. So that's gonna be a pain in the ass until they update this shit. So that is one of the negatives of being a light creative cloud. You know, you get all the updates, you get all the newest stuff, and sometimes it breaks it for a while. This is the biggest break I've experienced uh, in years on this. I had a pretty solidified workflow and, you know, like how I go about doing things. And this is really breaking up my routine and pissing me off and making me less productive, uh, mildly, but still fucking annoying. So, I don't know. And honestly, too, for those of you that are super users of Adobe, and maybe you're not having this problem, something I should also explain, and something that's a little bit my fault, is I'm mostly having this in my YouTube program, which I've been basically using the same file for years. I keep updating it, resaving it, saving it on new drives, but like probably the last five years of program or videos are all in this one file because I usually go back and copy and paste color corrections or music beds which when I find time I want to rebuild anyways it's time to make a new file when I do it in my smaller files where I do other videos that are not YouTube it opens faster it renders faster media encoder still works so maybe some of this is on me but still it was working beautifully perfectly fine for like two three years now we're in a phase of brokenness and that makes me a very mad. Um, that said, I also got my Patreon song out. I was going to do uh, a certain song. I was like, I did that song last October. Oh, whatever. Anyways, that's out. That's scheduled. I am now rendering my trailer so I can export those and put those out. I'm trying to finish filming the vlog while that happens so I can let these last few videos process. And then I'm going to edit the vlog and do all my text work and time codes while I edit. That's how I do it now. It's just easier. It takes a little longer, but it's all in one go. And then when that starts to render and works on its export, then I'll go work on trash. And I'll either party on the deck or watch a movie. I would like to watch one of those movies. I don't know. I got so many movies now I need to watch. I don't know. It's so late. It's already 1, 10 a.m. I'm gonna be at this a while. It sucks. That's the thing. I don't know how much I like this one work, one YouTube work day a week thing. I, I can't let myself let it be more than that if I want to get to the things I want to get to. But I don't know, man. I got to do less. I still got to do less somehow. Anyways, that's that bitching. <laughs> okay, another thing. I said I was going to maybe do some taste tests today, and I didn't get to that, obviously. But also, let's give me the Kirk light. Um, so... Honestly, uh, by the way, Star Trek Strange New Worlds is fucking phenomenal. Um, I think what's going to happen is next week, because as we're getting ready for the Jamboree, uh, which is coming up quick, we leave Wednesday. I still need an oil change. I'm doing a hair thing, which we'll talk about next vlog, if it happens or it doesn't. Um, you know, uh, got to figure out my packing, which is weird for me because I got to figure out how many guitars and tech gear to take. It's not just like throwing some clothes together. I got to wash a bunch of clothes. Uh, and like last year, I am not wearing Joe Bob shirts. I am not wearing black. I will wear colors every single day because everybody out there, well, the vast majority out there are wearing Joe Bob shirts or black. And it's like, I want to stand out a little bit. You know what I'm saying? Just a little pro tip that I'm giving away for free. <sighs> Sucks last year's Chambery episode hasn't aired yet and won't by the time of this Chambery. I don't know what's going on. But, um... Yeah, I got so much of that going on. I already forgot the purpose of this. Oh, I'm going to... So next week, next week's vlog is probably going to be just a taste test. I'm probably not going to cook anything. I may or may not make a cocktail. Uh, we'll make up for it later this month. 
And maybe I'll make something, maybe I won't. I just wanna let you know that maybe next week's not. Uh, there's a bunch of Mountain Dews I can try, there's a bunch of chips I can try, maybe I'll go find some other things. It's just gonna be a little bit easier to do that. And of course, the week after that, I'm sure the vlog will encompass some of my jamboree visit, although I have like a four hour thing from last year I never finished. So we'll see what happens with that as well. But I just wanted to give you that heads up. And um, also coming up, since this will be the coming up segment, hold on, this video is about to finish. Okay, um, I will also let you, we'll do the trailers here as well, telling you what trailers are coming up as I have one more to render and then I can start the exports. So in case you're wondering, trailers coming up this week, I don't know what the order of release of these will be, but we have the Red Band trailer for Sharp Stick, the teaser trailer for See How They Run, the trailer for The Invitation, the teaser trailer for Hocus Pocus 2, and the teaser trailer for season three of Harley Quinn animated series I'm fine don't worry about it I'll overcome it <sighs> but that's the working plan and upcoming trailers all right let's talk video games um I played briefly for fun today I played a little bit of Dragon Fighter Z I really need to relearn that game I sucked I played the computer on easy and had my ass whooped I was you uh, Yoshi Yoshi that's not right Roshi, and uh, I got my ass whooped by Yamcha. That fucking sucked, it was embarrassing. I also had to undownload and re-download because it was an issue. I played some arcade mode with Mikey of TMNT. God, I forget how much I love that game. That made me late running today because I played more of that than I meant to. Did I tell you my quarry story? I think I told you my quarry story last week where I fell asleep and actually, yeah, I told you that story. Um, I almost bought the Sonic the redos, not redos, the collection of one through four thing they put out. And I'm like, I don't, I suck at Sonic. I'm not loving that. So I didn't do that. I, I'm starting to want to play some more of my WWE. That's going to be fun. I keep wanting to play more Star Wars on my PlayStation 5. I haven't got there. I did go to GameStop the other day. They had the uh, Xbox Series X on the shelves, regular price, no bundles. They also, not only did I walk in and find that in the wild, I walked in and I found a PlayStation 5 in the wild. They had it, disc version, the Horizon Bundle. Still a bundle bundle, not just the Horizon Bundle, but like a GameStop bundle. And the guy was like, it's probably about 900 bucks by the time. So I don't know what was with it because I'm good. But I was just like, okay, it was kind of cool. This is the first time I've ever walked into a store and saw all three. And actually they had Switch OLED, which is not that hard to find now. But basically every new modern generation console they had on the shelves. I found it in the wild, one stop. And it's like on the shelf, so it's not like flying off before they could put it on the shelf, it was on the shelf. So I'm just saying, keep checking out your GameStop. I mean, especially if you're not opposed to a bundle, which I totally understand if you are. But um, yeah, so. God, there's so many cool things though. There's some stuff coming to Game Pass or whatever I'm excited about, but. And I haven't had time to play around. Uh, maybe later this month, we'll get into some other stuff. But that's the video game section. Okay, last but not least, it's 1.16 a.m. I just need to wrap this up. So thank you for joining me. Sorry if this is getting a little weird. Next week's gonna be a little weird too because there's so much going on. Hopefully the week after that will be something special, maybe. And then week after that, uh, we should start returning to normal. I do still really hope I get to make a pizza crust from scratch and a whole other pizza. Um, I still have one more of my Ninja Turtle pizzas to make for our videos. I need to do the unboxing of action figures. May bit off a little more than I can chew, but still worth it because that game is amazing. Um, I really want to get back to music. Vlogs may need to simplify. They may need to just be these phone talks, but I'll shoot a little bit every day of what's going on. Maybe less cooking is all I'm saying. I still love cooking, but it is a bit of a chore when I feel like I have to do it every week. Um, it definitely takes away from my time for creativity, but some of that is also, I just really need the wedding shit figured out. Life, man adulting and all that it fucking sucks but uh did i tell you i went to i got my uh new driver's license i mean i have to have to send it to me but i got like the real id eight years address changed did the whole deal got that handled you know haircut hair appointment for a thing maybe which hopefully you'll see next week if it happens um you know now i just gotta do oil change that's the next big thing oil change and start figuring out packing because what it's today is thursday it's technically oh no it is technically thursday so I'm basically a week out from leaving for the Jamboree. I'm gonna miss the cats, but 
I'm very, very excited. It's going to be such a good time. And I guess we'll talk more about that next week, but really I got to wrap this up. So I got to get out of here. All right. Thank you everybody. Hopefully you're enjoying this. Suggest things, thoughts, comments, how you feel. I got to deal with all this shit eventually. I'm thinking about changing everything in here. Being a creative can be hard, <laughs> mentally difficult at times. Also, I really need to lose weight like crazy. Okay. We'll work on all that. I'm going to go fuck up the rest of this martini and finish my edits and get the trash out and all that and maybe do some laundry all right i'll see y'all later okay uh oh fuck we gotta do the whole thing okay so comment let me know what you think all that stuff click the thumbs up button give me the thumb of encouragement as i do love to be encouraged and remember that we will get through this we will get through this together check out my music anywhere you listen to music spotify itunes whatever old school pop punk is what i do eric butts maybe you'll like it maybe you won't try a couple songs see what you think and of course um you know what are the other words i use here uh, you can go to ericbutts.com i very i'm also trying to export right now my very out of date website for some film stuff some other music stuff and of course you can check the links in the description below for more content more ways to support this channel so click that see more button to see more butts boom that is so much more work than if i could media encode it all right i'm gonna get out of here i'm gonna stop complaining for now and i'll complain more later i'll see you okay bye i love y'all bye bye